Hi, welcome to The Gamesplainer. I'm Jeff The Gamesplainer and today I'm gamesplaining Takanoko. In the game of Takanoko, everyone is working on the same field or uh, garden of bamboo shoots to look after this little panda guy here. Everyone controls the panda, everyone controls the gardener, and everyone will be placing tiles around the board. On your turn, you will have two actions. Those actions can be any one of these five choices. The first choice is to place a tile. Placing a tile looks like taking the top three tiles from the stack, choosing one of these three, and then placing it, touching a pre-existing tile. Any future tile placement after the first tile has been placed will have to follow the rules of having to touch two other pieces or touch the edge of the pond. Once you've placed your tile, those two tiles that you have chosen not to use will go onto the bottom of the stack in whichever order you choose. The next action possible is to gain one water. And for the moment, you'll just put that on your board until you need to use it or choose to use it. At any point, you can use this. It doesn't take one of your actions. The next action is to move the gardener. When you move the gardener, he can go in a straight line in any direction. So if we had more tiles out, he would be able to move as far as he liked to the end of the board in any direction. Where he stops, he will grow some bamboo. So if he stopped there, he would grow one bamboo shoot on that tile. Now the rules for bamboo to be able to grow on a tile are that the tile is irrigated. To have a tile irrigated, it needs to either share an edge with a pond, as this one does, or if it's further away, so I'll throw an extra couple of tiles in. If I wish to have this pink one irrigated, I would need to use that piece of irrigation plus one other. So at the moment, the two green tiles are irrigated. Now the pink tile is irrigated as well. When a tile is placed, so even before we move the gardener, as soon as it has irrigation, so when this one was placed, it should get one piece of bamboo onto it. That one should have received one piece of bamboo. Once this one got placed and then was irrigated, it would have one piece of bamboo just grow automatically. Then when the gardener is moved along to it, we will get to add one more piece of bamboo to that. Now, having the gardener also adds one piece of bamboo to any matching color. So this tile will also get a piece of bamboo added to it when the gardener goes here. The pink one, however, because it's a different color, will not. The fourth action we have to choose from is to move the panda. The panda shares the same movement rules with the gardener. He can only move in a straight line, which means he can only get to this tile or this tile from where he currently stands. He cannot get to the pink tile because that wouldn't be a straight line. So say the panda moves to here. When he stops at a tile, he will eat one of the pieces of bamboo and that piece of bamboo will get added to your board in the panda's stomach. The fifth action that we have is to take a card. There are three different piles of cards. The cards that have tiles on them, the cards that have to do with the gardener, so that's dependent on the size of pieces of bamboo, and the cards with the picture of the panda on the back, and that's dependent on the colors of bits of bamboo that the panda has eaten. So let's look at, so when you take that action, you'll take one of the cards from the top of one of those decks. So let's have a look at the decks. What this, tile, this card requires is that there are three green tiles in this particular pattern. So this pattern is actually already existed at the board between these three tiles yet this one's pink. If this one was green, that one would, would be um, accurate and would have succeeded. You'll also notice the water droplet. That means that all three tiles need to be irrigated, which we currently have done. So if this one was green, not pink, then that would be able to be played. At any point on your turn, if your card shows something that is accurate on the board, it doesn't matter if you've made it happen or someone else has made it happen, you can play the card. These gardener cards are talking about the height of bamboo. So this one's worth eight points. If you can get four different green bamboo shoots to a height of three pieces each. So at the moment we've got one sitting at height two and one sitting at height one. They don't need to be next to each other. They could be anywhere around the tiles, but you need to get four actually the size three 
for that one to be accurate. And the one with the panda on the back is to do with the bamboo that the panda has eaten. So once this panda has two green bamboo pieces in his belly, then you can play that. So on this player's next turn, he might move the panda to here, which would eat another piece of bamboo. Suddenly he has two green bamboo shoots, so he can say, I've achieved that goal. He'll poop out those two bits of bamboo and they'll go back into the box and then he can continue on his turn. Claiming one of those cards costs absolutely nothing. Now after the first go, or first round, everyone will roll a die before they start. And that die will do something depending on what side of the die we have. And they're all indicated by these six icons up here. So the first one with the ring of fire gives you an extra thing that you can do. Uh, so you'll play, say I do a tile, say I take an irrigation, and then I might move the panda. And make sure you mark what you've done as you're going so you don't do the same thing twice. I know that seems really inconsequential to the game, but when you're playing, it's very easy to forget what you've done while you're thinking, and it's very easy to forget if you've done one or two things. I know it's only two things to keep track of, but it's worthwhile and you'll see the benefit of it once you get into the game. The second side of the die, which is the rain drops, allows you to add bamboo to any one tile. So I might make it rain on this tile, Bearing in mind the tile must be irrigated before you're able to make bamboo grow and so bamboo has just grown on that tile. Bearing in mind that when you are building bamboo or from either the gardener or from rain there is a maximum amount of bamboo that can go on each shoot of four. So four is the tallest that any one bamboo shoot can grow to. The next one is the wind. Wind enables you to do the same action twice. And that's, you don't have to, but you can. So I might want to add some tile, add a tile. I can then add another tile. Next up is the lightning. Lightning scares the panda and enables you to place the panda on any tile. Um, you don't have to follow the movement rules in this case. You can just jump it to any tile you wish. And once again, he will eat a bamboo shoot once he is there. The next one is the cloud. The cloud enables you to take one of these three uh, little tokens. When you take one of the tokens, uh, let's say that one, you'll just place it on that bottom section of your board until you choose to use it. When you use it, what that looks like is, say I place it here, that will stay there for the rest of the game, that can't be moved. What that one means is that whenever bamboo grows, so because of the gardener, it will actually grow two pieces rather than just the one. So in my next turn, if the gardener moves to here, two pieces of pink bamboo will grow instead of just one. If I were to play this tile onto that, say it wasn't irrigated before, that token now makes this tile irrigated even though it's not officially irrigated. Any other tiles around it cannot draw irrigation from this tile, they still need to go back to the pond, but this tile is irrigated so it can grow bamboo and can count towards the card that needs the tiles irrigated. And the third one, if placed here, means that the panda is not able to eat any of the bamboo on this tile. Some of the tiles that you pick up will have those markings on them already. They mean exactly the same thing, but they're not movable. If a tile already has an improvement on it like this, it can't have one of those little hexes added onto the tile later and they can't be changed. So whether it's the permanent ones or the movable ones, once they're down, they can't move, they can't be changed. And the last of the dice is the question mark side. The question mark side means you get to choose any of the other five sides to use as your bonus. The end game depends on the number of players. If it's a two player game, the game will finish once a player plays their ninth objective card. If it's three players, eight objective cards. If it's four, you're only going after seven objective cards. The player who places that last objective card We'll get this card, which is the Emperor's Seal of Approval, which is worth another point, another two points. And then the round is completed so that everyone else will have a chance to, to have one more turn, uh, not the person who starts that end round. Once everyone's had that extra turn, then play is done and everyone adds up the numbers according to the bottom of those cards. Whoever has the highest points wins the game. That's 
Takenoko in a nutshell, that's it. I hope this helps you get Takenoko to the table. I hope this gives you a good feel for how Takenoko plays. Please go on and watch my Games Played video to actually see a portion of the game played through so you can get a better grasp of how the game flows. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you wish to be Games Played, please shoot me an email at thegamesplanner at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplanner to see what games I've been playing. Check out my blog, thegamesplanner.wordpress.com to read about my adventures in gaming each week. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.